Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Siao Tatum Shaba Siao Tata. 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 Amanda. 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 Welcome to the Andile Ngotama podcast. Andile Ngotama speaks podcast. Um, we are going to talk about land. The land expropriation political football is again being put into the national space. Parliament has invited public comment on the expropriation bill. The hearings will happen probably at the end of March or in April. This same expropriation bill, which has been circulating around for years now, with the new provision to implement this notion that we, we must buy back the land and the expropriation of land must be reserved for unused land, unproductive land, unwanted land. This expropriation bill is not about expropriating land. It is just a political gimmick, again, to create the impression that something is being done about the land question when nothing is actually being done. If we think about the history of this whole thing, it was the EFF Julius Malema standing in parliament saying, moving that there must be land expropriation without compensation and for the first time the ANC agreed and everyone was celebrating and we warned at the time already that this is a political game. One of the things that we said at the time was that Julius and Cyril are on the same side when it comes to land expropriation. They want conditional expropriation of land. And they want expropriation of land which will not affect the economy. That, was, that is the language of Cyril. But we know that Julius went to PAL in 2015 to um, assure white farmers that EFF does not want to expropriate their farms when they are in productive use. EFF only wants unproductive land. That's his words, unproductive land. On the other hand, Cyril speaks about the need for expropriation to happen, however, it must not affect the economy. It is exactly the same logic, the logic of doing expropriation of land without expropriating land. Therefore, the talk of expropriation is just a rhetorical device. It's a political rhetorical device to lull the landless to believe that somebody speaks for land expropriation when in fact nobody does. This is a hollowed out talk of land expropriation without compensation. Now they have prepared a bill which is very clear that land will be expropriated with compensation. But it introduces this silly notion that under certain circumstances, nil compensation must be paid. So they believe this is a radical move, it's, a, it's an amazing move to uh, open up the land, the land space. It is not, because the same bill says that expropriation 
when it happens it must be according to the constitution and the rule of law and that simply means that when expropriation happens market value will be paid in other words this bill all it does is to introduce the notion of forced sales under certain conditions the farmer will sell their land back to us at market value under certain conditions but the land which will be expropriated nil compensation is abandoned they say it in that bill abandoned land land which is highly indebted basically useless land it's a joke this thing which again is being introduced because they are preparing for elections for next year so the talk of land expropriation is being introduced into public discourse to delay the organ real organization of the landless to take back the land so these parliamentary processes are processes of delay and deception delay the actual delivery of land on the one hand by pretending that something is happening and deceive the landless by creating the impression that some something is happening to return the land this bill should not be called land expropriation bill it should be called the bill to dispose of unused unwanted land and not only that to beg for it as well we understand the ANC policy proposals on land expropriation have been so watered down that they're talking about asking for donation. Land must be donated. Land thieves are expected to donate land. I mean, it shows you that there's no seriousness here in this country. We, we are playing serious games for the land question. And I mean, it is clear that the current political, dominant political forces do not have the acumen, do not have the temperament, do not have the desire, do not have the commitment to address the land question, and they will not address it. So we are sitting here with an endless, useless process which will not deliver land to our people. We have suggested to them that what the only one amendment that must happen and that amendment must say all land in white hands in South Africa is stolen property and therefore it must be returned. That's all you need to do. And we can't have the Minister of Agriculture and Land Affairs in the same department. You need to have a Ministry of Land Affairs, Land Redistribution, and its sole mandate upon which it must be evaluated is the number of hectares it delivers. They are fudging the thing by bringing agriculture into the whole situation. Now you're talking about creating jobs and all that, supporting small farmers and large-scale farmers, and of course taking all the money to white established farmers with all these government assistance programs. But we are saying that you must disaggregate land from agriculture. There must be a ministry which must be judged, must be evaluated only on one thing and one thing alone. How many hectares of land have exchanged hands from white people to black people on an annual basis? And a target must be set to be able to address the almost 80% land ownership by 1% of the population. We must be able to say in five years, 50% of the land will be in the hands of the black majority. And then every year we must see the kind of move to address and to achieve that objective. The RDP document, policy document, promised 30% of the land in the first five years. In the first five years under the uh, ministry run by Derek Hanekom, that racist, only less than 1% of the land was redistributed. Derek Hanekom is the one who is the architecture, is the main organizer of the South African land policy the way it is today. 
an Afrikaner man who defended his Afrikaner brothers and sisters who have our land, by being in the ANC, was able to basically organize a land redistribution program which does not redistribute land. He made sure that he defends his kith and kin by operating from within the ANC. And all the ANC comrades accepted this a bogus land reform program, which has three elements. It is land restitution, which deals with people who lost land since 1913 with the application of the Land Act. And then there's the redistribution, which is the main program of willing buyer, willing seller, where we buy land from willing white land thieves. And then there's tenure reforms, which deal with tenure rights of people on farms and on communal areas. But the key thing is the, the underlying logic of the whole land reform program was one of maintaining the white agricultural system, white land ownership, and black people being marginally involved. And that program was articulated and developed by the son of the Africana land thieves, Derek Hanukom, from within the ANC. And the comrades in parliament were clapping for these policies that Derek Anakom was pushing. Take the land restitution program, the one that says uh, you can claim land only after 1913. If you lost land after 1913. Now, I mean, these people arrived in 1652. They've been taking land all the time. But this law says if you lost land after 1913, 1913 was really when they made that law, they were just confirming, they were confirming the land theft that had happened and giving legal right to that land theft. After 1913, there was no more land, uh, uh, massive land, because we didn't have land. 1913 land act restricted us to 13% of the land. So what land? Are they talking about that we lost after 1913? But that is the advice that Derek Hanekom and um, Jeff Butlander, who was the first director general of Land Affairs, gave the ANC, and the ANC clapped, and the ANC decided to confine restitution to apartheid forced removals, which were forced removals of really marginal lands that we still held onto. The majority of land was taken before 1913. 1913, white people sat in their parliament to give legal legitimation. It was a legitimation program of the land theft that has happened since 1652. So the whole land program of South Africa is a bogus program to start with. Now they are putting us into a bogus discussion around land expropriation without compensation talking about unused land over debted land even state land is included in the land that must be expropriated therefore this land expropriation process which is again being reintroduced is not designed to address the land question it is designed to delay the land question as we say it is like a beer without alcohol you know you 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 drink forever how many gallons but you will remain sober so this is the land program without land redistribution it is a political football to delay the organization of our people to us reclaiming land and taking land that is why black first land face is working so closely with the land party because we believe that what they have done in hermanas by taking land that is the proper program that we must all undertake because politicians are playing a political football with the land question we must again reiterate there shall be no land expropriation without compensation from that parliament as it's currently constituted you need a radical voice which means what it says to introduce new laws we should address the land question and make sure that land returned to these rightful owners and land thieves are dispossessed of the land they have right now. As, thing, as things stand, land is not coming back, comrades. Forget about it. As Kotluini is related.
Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Panting at DA Panty. Siao ta tum shaba siao ta ta. 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 Amanda, Amanda, Amanda.